Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. We all know this as the Jesus prayer. It's a beautiful prayer you can pray all day long. You can say it at any time. You don't have to have a specific reason to say it. Just being conscious of the Savior's presence in your life and wanting to briefly take the time to join yourself to Him in a very special way is sufficient reason enough. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. When we go before the Lord in prayer, we always have to be careful not to be like the Pharisees were in today's gospel. They were quick to think how good they were and quick to look at others and say, don't be like that one there. It's not our place to judge others as the Pharisees constantly did. Besides, if the truth be told, we're all probably more like that one there than we'd like to admit, aren't we? We can never fail by going before the Lord and asking for His mercy. He's so rich in His divine mercy, so full of it, and it's always available to us. He offers it to us in an abundance we can't even imagine the depths of. The man in today's gospel, he wasn't looking to be healed of his blindness. He'd never known anything other than his darkness. Back in those times, Everyone was quick to see a physical handicap as being the result of their sins or even the sins of their ancestors. After all, someone had to pay for the sins of their families. In that regard, frankly, the Pharisees weren't alone in their thinking that this blind man was just living out his just desserts. But Jesus came to us to shatter that false thinking that Old Testament way of looking upon others less fortunate than us. So today he opens this blind man's eyes from his darkness to see before him the light of the world. And the spiritual awakening that the man goes through throughout the space of this gospel reading today is the same spiritual awakening that we're all called to embrace, ultimately professing that Jesus is our Lord as we worship him. Our Savior came into the world to bring us all from the darkness of our ignorance and sin into the light of knowing Him and His love for us. Jesus is the light of the world. He tells us so today. And where His light truly shines, there can be no darkness. The two are mutually exclusive. Yet we each know that in our own hearts, darkness still remains. That means we haven't truly and fully opened ourselves to His light and His mercy. So we have to keep trying. Our lives must be a constant journey to the fullness of Christ's light and into the fullness of His mercy that He offers to each of us. But it's more than just the mercy that our Lord shows to us. It's also the mercy that our Lord desires from us. He asks that we share his light, the light of Christ, with others. Mercy should become our middle name. All we need do to be able to play this most special role in his kingdom is to open ourselves up to him as the light of the world. And when we open our eyes to his light, just as when the blind man's eyes were open, wonderful things can happen to us too. St. Paul makes it so clear today in his letter to the Ephesians. Before we knew Christ as our Savior, we were in darkness. But just as God through Samuel called David, so we've been baptized and we're here together today to worship him and his Father. We've been chosen by the Lord too. And we do this willingly and with full hearts. We're children of light and our light can produce, as St. Paul says, every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. So how can we be this light? How can we directly and physically participate in the showering of his divine mercy into our world? Well, in addition to the Jesus prayer, let me offer you today a few other easy and practical ways to do that. St. John Paul II and Pope Benedict XVI helped raise to the church's attention 
the amazing story of a humble Polish nun, St. Maria Faustina Kowalska. She was a member of the Congregation of the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy in Warsaw, Poland, and she died in 1938 at the age of 33. Hers was an intimately personal and inspiring walk of faith with Jesus, and it included conversations with and messages from our Lord about the power of his divine mercy. He directed her to faithfully write down his messages, which she did. They were later consolidated after her death into a book, The Diary of Maria Faustina Kowalska, and it's officially recognized by the church as being authentic. I sincerely recommend its reading to each of you after having read it and returned to it time and time again. If you honestly want to grow in your faith, I guarantee you it will happen if you read her diary. And if you're looking for something else that's simple and concrete to do every day or when you can, if you want to join yourself in a special direct way with your Savior as his instrument of mercy to others, Learning and praying the chaplet of divine mercy will help the light of Christ grow within you as you pray and share that light and its power with those that you pray for. So in addition to the Jesus prayer, you can read St. Faustina's diary and you can learn and pray the chaplet of divine mercy that she brought to us through our Savior Jesus Christ. St. Faustina was canonized by St. John Paul II on April the 30th in the year 2000, on the second Sunday of Easter, making her the first saint of this new millennium. During his homily, he declared this, it is important that we accept the whole message that comes to us from the word of God on this second Sunday of Easter, which from now on throughout the church will be called Divine Mercy Sunday. St. John Paul II, in doing this, was bringing to fulfillment the directions Jesus gave to his church through St. Faustina, as recorded in her diary. Let me also share with you a few words that Pope Benedict XVI himself said, giving us about how we can participate in our Lord's merciful forgiveness. This is what he said. Have faith, Jesus tells us, in divine mercy. Become day after day men and women of God's mercy. Mercy is the garment of light with which the Lord has given us all in baptism. We must not allow this light to be extinguished. On the contrary, it must grow within us every day and thus bring to us and the world God glad, God's glad tidings. <laughs>